welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-32. Last time on the Bard's podcast, our quartet was being removed from the prison, but had been previously warned of impending danger. As the adventurers were led down a narrow alley, the flanking guards were attacked with rotten fruit and vegetables. A female atop the wall threw a silver chain down to the party, and they twisted the metal into a figure eight, as been previously told. Upon doing so, a bright flash of light illuminated the alley. We rejoin the group as they fight to regain their sight. I can't see! I can't see! yelled out Fargus as he rubbed his eyes with his still hands. One by one, each of his associates confirmed that they were in a similar predicament until a calm voice soothed their concerns. Calm down, my children. The blindness is only temporary. It will subside in just a moment, the deep voice said. Sister Elaine stopped struggling as she heard the voice. Stammering out her response, she identified the man as the High Bishop from the Church of Dilo. The others calmed down immediately and began to blink away the blindness which had been slowly dissipating. As their eyes grew accustomed to their new surroundings, the cleric recognized it immediately as the room that she had been in before. We're inside the church, she exclaimed. Cabe Silvertongue, Lady Irena, and Fargus Stoutheart looked around for the guards that were transporting them, but found that they seemed to be alone with just a few other people. A few moments later, the waif from the prison entered gasping for breath. The High Bishop held up his hand and waved the girl to the back of the room. Please, sit. You must be exhausted from the past several days, as the holy man said, and he waved to four chairs in front of his desk. As the group took their places, a small and familiar girl ran up to each one and brought a cup of wine and a plate of food. Nodding to the dirty group, the High Bishop bade them to eat while they quickly did. Their cups were then refilled by another old associate. Dingus! shouted Cabe. You look well. The orphan leader smiled and pointed out that he definitely looked better than the quartet. He put his hand on the shoulders of the bard and the mage and pointed out that they had not located Welby yet, causing the group to become despondent. The High Bishop and Dingus looked at the group, sensing a problem. Do... do you know where he is? inquired the holy man. Sister Elaine cleared her throat and explained the issue with a gasp spore. Dingus and the High Bishop were saddened by the news and relayed their condolences. After a few more bites, the group began to look around and asked what had occurred. The High Bishop stood again and explained the situation to the party. Your victory in the sewers has come at a cost. The underworld figures that you were captured were low level, but apparently an integral part of the crime syndicate within Phoenix. Not only has this group done an amazing job of framing you for a burglary, but they were about to take you out and execute you. Dingus stepped in and began to speak next. My friends, you've done a superb job here despite your lack of understanding the semantics of the problem. In spite of the excellent job, it has become um, detrimental to your health and reputation to remain in the city. We must therefore ask you to leave and have made arrangements to smuggle you out safely. Leave? shouted a red-faced ranger. He attempted to continue to speak, but was so overwrought with anger that the words would not form correctly. The others began to chime in their dissent at the situation and complained loudly for several minutes, all the while the High Bishop and Dingus nodded in understanding. With no breath left in their lungs, Dingus sighed and heavily bowed his head. <sighs> you four individuals have displayed great courage and are considered heroes in Phoenix. While minor, you have become a potent force for the people to cling to. They understand now that evil cannot be allowed to flourish and that the hope has come from you. 
Irena, Elaine, and Fargus all began to shout again until Cave got them quiet. <coughs> I'm afraid I do not understand this situation at all. Why would we choose to leave now when we're considered heroes? That doesn't make any sense. Dingus looked to the High Bishop who nodded in agreement. I understand your frustration, Half-Elf, the priest began, but let me ask you this. For as heroic your deeds have been thus far, how would the people react if they found out you had burgled a business? Currently, only a handful of guards know what really happened. The Syndicate is certain to let that information out if you reappear, and then everything that you have done will have been erased. Lady Irena, still wrapping her head around the situation, interjected. But what is stopping them from releasing the information if we leave town? The others nodded in agreement, but it was Dingus that cleared the issue up. <sighs> With some members of the city guard obvious on the take, it would look bad if they failed to resolve a crime. With you gone, they can't blame you if they can't catch you. You have wandered into the middle of a very political issue, and while I do not expect you to understand, I do expect you to trust us. The four adventurers looked at each other and formed up. After several minutes of tense discussion, the group returned to their seats. How are you proposing we escape Phoenix without being seen? asked Sister Elaine. The High Bishop then explained that the church has contacts in the strangest of locations. We have obtained an old acquaintance of yours to get you out of the city and out to the land you originally intended to explore when you first arrived here. Dingus spoke next and nodded to the young girl who aided their escape and brought a large sack over to them. The group checked the contents and found their belongings that they had been captured with. With only a few items missing, the group re-equipped themselves until Lady Arena found Welby's box and a tear ran down her cheek. Fargus spoke up, unaware of the find. So, who is this friend of ours you spoke of? A shadowy figure emerged from the darkness and spoke in a deep voice. He didn't say a friend, laddie. The others gasped in unison as the figure emerging from the shadows was none other than Johan the Lone Shark. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.